Solomon's temple was built in seven years, but the construction of a new synagogue in Boca Raton is going on 10, thanks to a small but well-funded and vocal opposition. This is Rabbi Ruby New, a native Australian and musician on the side. That's a song from his latest album. The rabbi devotes most of his time to leading his congregation, or Chabad, which started in his living room and has now outgrown two facilities. Okay, welcome to our humble abode. This is the uh, Chabad at Peace Boca Center. Boca, located in South Florida, happens to be home to one of the strongest Jewish communities in the country, which has been widely accepted by the city at large. Even an episode of Seinfeld alluded to this fact when Jerry's Jewish parents moved to Del Boca Vista. Are you trying to keep us out of Del Boca Vista? The Chabad currently meets in a small storefront. And members have definitely felt the need for a larger place to call home, particularly for religious holidays, celebrations, and educational programs, most of which they now outsource to local hotels. This building is woefully inadequate. It just is. It's not meant to be. It's not was not built as a synagogue. When it's a holiday, believe me, we're falling over each other. The kids are absolutely stuffed into this little playroom here, which is just claustrophobic. So we got families just don't just don't come because there's just nowhere to, you know for the kids to play. Well, we struggle a little bit with the idea of not having a place for our son to become a bar mitzvah. You know, we've really been in the in in the search for a permanent home for ten years now. Their first attempt to move was rejected in 2008. What we thought would be, wow, this would be a great um, welcome addition to the community, house of worship. It actually caused a firestorm of um, opposition, which, which we were just completely blindsided by. The opposition would continue for the next decade, long contentious meetings and lawsuits. And while all that was going on, the Chabad suffered repeated acts of vandalism broken windows, theft, threatening letters about their building plans. One young man from the Chabad was assaulted in the street and told to go back to Auschwitz. It was just a little bit nerve, uh, nerve-wracking having somebody scream at me these things. While most people in Boca supported the Chabad and the city unanimously accepted their most recent plans to build on this plot of land, a small, determined group kept up opposition lobbying against the synagogue and filing lawsuits, making it so that the Chabad still can't build. Today, the project has been called one of the most contentious in the city's history. Given the size and scope of this project, which is minuscule relative to the projects that are going on in this area, you know, it, it boggles the mind. The most recent barrier to the synagogue's construction has been an aggressive federal lawsuit. The lawsuit claims that because the city of Boca allowed a synagogue to build, it was violating the Establishment Clause. They're trying to say that the Constitution stops the city from treating the Chabad fairly. This is Beckett attorney Lori Windham. Beckett is defending the Chabad in the lawsuit. Even though the plaintiffs have lost twice, they've prolonged the case by appealing in federal court. I think it's a pretty big stretch to say that just because you allow Chabad to be treated fairly, you're somehow establishing a religion. Uh, certainly did not expect the, uh, the route to our destination to be this scenic. Um, the vast majority defend and believe in our right to, um, to build and to, be, and to have a permanent uh, presence. It's not just uh, a dream and it's not just a vision, uh, it's imperative. And so we are very determined to make that happen. 